stop all the clocks, we're going to talk about transgenderism, which we do very, very rarely on this programme for, for two reasons, one of which is selfish and one of which isn't. I generally upset everybody when we wade into this conversation. I, I'm regularly called transphobic, which is obviously hurtful and, and obviously untrue. But equally, I'm, I'm also called misogynistic by, I think, I don't know if she actually used the word, but most recently a journalist I've always admired, Suzanne Moore, lumped me in with various people who are very, very prominently, I don't even know what the language is uh, that, that one deploys in these circumstances, but are, are vocally, vociferously of the view that transgender women should be able to go wherever they want, even when it frightens or threatens biological women currently in, in those same spaces. So I upset everybody when I talk about this. It, it, it's a strange one. I once tweeted, for example, that it seems to me to be reasonable to exclude human beings with penises from female-only spaces, to which my friend Paris Lees replied, you know me, we've met several times, I'm a transgender woman, do you know whether or not I've got a penis? And I realised that even that relatively simple contribution to the conversation didn't really stand up to scrutiny. It, it, it was quite an enlightening moment. And that's the problem I've got, is that when you talk about stuff, usually you learn more. But on this issue more than any other, when we talk about it, we almost learn less. You're constantly encouraged to, to entrench. Now, the reason I also avoid it is because, as 30p Lee accidentally divulged in a recent interview, that the government is determined, in the absence of any actual achievements, it's determined to turn it into uh, culture war red meat that will divide the population and create a problem that only they can solve. No matter that plenty of other countries have got legislation similar to what um, was about to be introduced in Scotland and, and don't report problems on anything like the scale that many people with legitimate concerns fear could or might happen. And then the prospect of, of somebody convicted of rape claiming to be transgender being put in a women's prison when almost everybody watching that is very sceptical about the claim obviously creates an enormous problem. An enormous problem. But when the, um, e e e the Convention on Human Rights, I forget what the correct phrase is, I'll get it for you in a minute, but when the government asks the ECHR to look into an issue and the ECHR or EHCR responds by suggesting that some problems could be solved by confining uh, areas to, to biological women, i.e. women who were born women, uh, rather than women who have transitioned to womanhood. It is time to talk about it. But how do we talk about it? How do we talk about it? Well, I think I know, or at least I think I've got one way to do it. It's the Equality and Human Rights Commission that is suggesting that some areas of legal opaqueness could be rendered clearer if laws were introduced to ban trans women from single-sex spaces and events. Now, that includes hospital wards and changing rooms. Hospital wards, almost everybody wants to be single-sex, but many of them still contain biological men and biological women. The trans equation doesn't come into that conversation. My mum was in one. I told you about it at the time. She hated it. It's horrible. So, I, I mean, how changing the law is suddenly going to solve the impacts of cuts to the NHS and austerity is for, is for Kemi Badenoch to tell you. But I think the way I'm going to approach this subject is a little bit unexpected. So I, I don't know if you've heard that people, it's a very lazy question, can a woman have a penis? To which the response is usually, oh gosh, got obfuscation, or oh, clearly not, oh don't be ridiculous, oh it's, it's so, oh it's horrible. Can you be born into the wrong body is the question that you ask. And I, I think the answer to that is, is obviously yes. It's been obvious for hundreds of years that you can be born into the wrong body. So when people say, can a woman have a penis? They're not really interested in approaching any sort of solution to this situation. They're just interested in, in bolstering the culture war. So if I were Keir Starmer or, or any other member of the body politic and I were asked, can a woman have a penis? I, I, I would say I can't answer that question until you tell me who checks. 
because I'm a policymaker, right? I'm a politician. And my job is to support policies and ideas. My job is not to sit in philosophical pronouncement upon the nature of gender or the nature of sex. Plenty of other people can appoint themselves to that position and they can argue with each other and that's absolutely fine. But I am the Minister for Equalities, let's pretend. I am Kemi Badenoch. So my job is to introduce legislation that improves the situation, either for ideally for everybody, alternatively for somebody. She, she is of the view that she wants to improve the situation for what we will call biological women, right? She wants to improve the situation for biological women by banning everybody who was not born as a biological woman from these spaces, from these female-only spaces, right? But I'm a politician. I'm not a philosopher. Uh, I... I, I have to introduce legislation that will work. So who's going to check? That's the question I've got for you. How, how, how is it going to work? Who's going to check? Here's a door, right? Two people are trying to go through it. One looks incredibly feminine, for want of a better word, but is actually a transgender woman. And one, again, speaking entirely theoretically, one looks quite masculine, but is a biological woman. Who's going to check who can go through that door? Now, it may well be that lots of other people have arrived at this conundrum already and have got good answers to it. But I can't think of one at the moment. I genuinely can't think of one. And I think this is why people who don't like thinking or people who don't like... Uh, changing their minds or people who don't like acknowledging the existence of nuance or grey areas or, 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 or difficult issues. I think that's why they're obsessed with asking questions like, what's the definition of a woman or can a woman have a penis? To which my response is, I don't know. In many ways, I don't know. Because when you ask me, can someone be born into the wrong body, then obviously that is true. And is it possible that our notions of gender may be revolutionised in the same way that our notions of sexuality have been over the last 50 years? I'd probably say, I, I, yeah, I think it is more than likely. More than likely. So I don't think it involves cowardice to say that nobody is wrong, but I can't call you a liar. You tell me you were born in the wrong body, I can't call you a liar, or rather I won't call you a liar. I have no desire to call you a liar. I don't want to call you uh, a, a, a lie, a, a living, breathing, walking lie. The, 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 the condition that you experience is dishonest, it's insincere, it doesn't actually exist. There are plenty of people who will tell you that if you are transgender. They'll tell you you're a lie. You're a walking, living, breathing lie. You don't exist. We can pretend that some elements of what you're saying can be accommodated by society, but you fundamentally do not exist. You cannot be born in the wrong body. And on the other side, you tell me that you are threatened and frightened by the prospect of non-biological women having access to your spaces, your changing rooms, your hospital wards. Uh, I, I mean, that's obviously already happened, but we're speaking theoretically. Your sports events. Um, again, that's probably a slightly more nuanced issue than simple access to space. I'm not going to call you a liar. I'm not going to say you're not really scared. You're just desperate to discriminate against these people that you find weird or these people that you find insincere or these people that you find dishonest I, i'm not gonna I, i'm certainly not gonna call you a liar and then you've got the areas where we probably mostly agree that it looks like some male rapists lie about being transgender in order to make a, a mockery of the judicial system and the, and the prison system i think that's probably one area where we can all agree but then i'm calling someone a liar you see in in the case of rapists with penises I'm prepared to impose a slightly less rigorous ethical code than I am with you and with you and with you, for, for, for good or for ill. So the question is, who's going to check? 03456060973. If Cammy's law comes in, two people, both... Well, no, I was going to say both wearing frocks, which is a slightly 1970s approach to the issue, but they're not both wearing frocks. Two people, one wearing a frock in full makeup with a visible cleavage and, uh, and, 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 and tights on and high heels, a head-turning woman, until you find out more about her, is walking towards 
a single sex space is walking towards a female space. And then here is someone with, let's just say, for the sake of argument, a, a, a shaven head, wearing dungarees, apparently flat chested, um, uh, wearing flat shoes, bother boots. Who's going to check which one is a biological woman and which one isn't? That, that's it for me. It's taken me quite a long time to get here. But when I hear people say, can a woman have a penis? I, I, I feel uncomfortable and I haven't been able to work out why. But the reason why I feel uncomfortable is that it's a really stupid question. It's a really stupid question because we're not talking about philosophical or physiological definitions. We're talking about shared experiences. We're talking about two people walking towards the same door one of whom looks like a bloke and one of whom looks like a woman, according to my upbringing and background. But what I do know, and what no one can dispute, is that the, the human being who looks like a woman may have been born a man, and the human being who looks like a man may be a biological woman. So who is going to check? Are we going to have a little ID card? And, and a scanner? Is it going to be like getting on the bus, where you'll make 50 journeys... And you won't have any trouble at all, but on the 51st journey, the inspector's going to get on and say, excuse me, madam. Can't really say excuse me, madam, can you? Excuse me, madam, he'll say, or she'll say, uh, could I possibly check your ID, please? Obviously, it's not going to happen on a bus, because we don't have uh, different areas on it. But you're in the changing. You walk, you're in the ladies. You go to the ladies 50 times, but on the 51st time, you've got to prove you're a lady. How? 03456060973. You can also give me a call and tell me why this is not a very important question for people actually coming up with laws designed to exclude non biological women from single sex spaces. Because I, at the moment, I can't see it. Just, and of course, massive majority of people listening aren't going to ring in, but just do me one favour. Next time you hear someone say, Can a woman have a penis? Just think about this question. Because until you tell me who's going to check, I don't see any point at all in asking the second question. 03456060973.